64. When ammonium chloride is added to water and stirred, it dissolves spontaneously, and the resulting solution feels cold. Without doing any calculations, deduce the sign of delta G, delta H, and delta S for this process, and justify your choices. Okay, so it seems like we just have to figure out the signs of the delta G, the delta H, and the delta S. So let's start with the overall delta G. Now delta G, remember, is Gibbs free energy. This is whether we're talking about it being a spontaneous reaction, which means that it just happens by itself, doesn't need any external amount of energy, and not spontaneous, which means that it does require an external source of energy. But if I read this again, it says that ammonium chloride was added to water and stirred, and it dissolves spontaneously. So in this example, we do have that word spontaneously, which means that it just did it by itself, didn't need any extra help. So we know that because that happens, this delta G would be a negative value. Anytime that you have a delta G being a negative, you're always going to have a spontaneous reaction. Let's work now on delta H. Keep in mind that delta H is the enthalpy. And the enthalpy, did I spell this right? N, oops, I forgot the N. Enthalpy. And the enthalpy of a reaction is basically just talking about the heat that's being produced or absorbed. Let's find the words that it told us that will give us the clue here. So when ammonium chloride is added to water and stirred, it dissolves spontaneously, so we don't care about that anymore, and the resulting solution feels cold. There's your heat clue here. We know that this reaction feels cold, so it's cold to the touch. So there's a two, there's two different options here. A delta H can either be exothermic or endothermic, whether you're releasing heat or you're absorbing heat. Just know, and I'll, maybe I'll put this over here, if you are releasing heat, if the system is releasing the heat, that means that the heat is going out into the surroundings. And to us, as you know, scientists that touch the beaker or whatever is is holding the solution, if the reaction is releasing heat, it's going to be feeling hot. On the flip side, if the reaction is absorbing the heat, it's keeping it all for itself. When we go to touch it, if it's absorbing all the heat, we're not going to feel the heat. We feel that it's cold. So just know those two things. Now, in this case, they did tell us that it was cold to touch. It feels cold. So that means that the system absorbed, or the reaction absorbed the heat. And any time that you're talking about absorbing heat, this is always endothermic. If you are releasing the heat and it you know, feels hot, that's exothermic. And from these clues, we can deduce that endothermic always means that a delta H is a positive value. Exothermic, on the other hand, means that it's a negative value. So since it felt cold, it absorbed the heat, the delta H is going to be a positive. Okay, so two out of three. Now we just have to read some clues again to find out what the entropy is. So maybe I'll just write this down. The delta G is Gibbs free energy, free energy, that's what that was, and then we have last but not least the entropy, which talks about the randomness of the molecules, right, what's going on, so let's just see. When ammonium chloride is added to water and stirred, it dissolves, right? And it dissolves spontaneously. And the resulting solution felt cold. All right, so it seems like we dissolved this uh, solid, right? You could only basically dissolve one substance. And generally, it's going to be a solid. 
So if I wrote out the balanced equation here, I can basically say that NH4Cl, that is ammonium chloride, right? Ammonium is NH4, Cl is chlorine, ammonium is plus one, chlorine is minus one on the periodic table. So NH4Cl will break down into NH4 plus plus Cl minus. And since it's in water, this is aqueous. And this is a salt, so you probably, we'll just say that it's a solid. Now, entropy is always talking about the randomness of molecules. Always see what you started with and what you ended with. Keep in mind that on your scale of uh, your molecules, a solid is always the least entropic substance. On the flip side, gases are the most. So they're the most random. Solids are the least random. So if you're taking your solid and you're not even making a solid anymore, you're making aqueous materials. It's kind of like a, along, along the lines of a liquid. Liquids are more random than solids. So as we're going from a solid to two different molecules, you're gaining more molecules, which means that you're gaining randomness. Instead of just having one molecule, you know, bouncing around, um, you have two of them, right? That's more random, more chaotic. If you're gaining randomness, the delta S is going to increase because you're gaining, right? Positive increase. So the delta S here would be just a positive because you're gaining. And maybe I'll put it the opposite way. So delta S, we said gaining randomness. So in this case, the delta S would be a positive. And then finally, it says justify your choices. Basically, whatever we just went through, that's all of the, 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 the breakdown of why the delta G is negative. The H and the S are both positive, and we are done. Okay. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please, uh, please hit the subscribe button. We're almost at 25,000 subscribers and it's all because of you guys. It's crazy. I'm so glad that this channel is helping out so many people from all over the world with their classes. We also have physics and math videos on the channel. So go check it out. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.